Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of the Richard Haynes Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Richard Haynes of Manhattan Pacific Realty, soon to be Haynes Real Estate, where we focus on the South Bay area of Los Angeles, specifically Manhattan Beach, Hermosa Beach, Redondo Beach, and the Palos Verdes Peninsula. It is July 27th, 2023. We hope you get to this episode in July. If not, it may post in August. I've got a solo episode for you guys yet again. Hope you've had an amazing start to your summer, a great 4th of July, and you're cruising into the hot dog days of summer here at the end of July, August, and are gearing up for a little college football and fantasy football. I know I'm fired up this year for my USC Trojans football team and can't wait to draft those fantasy teams as we cruise into the fall. But enough about that summer and football upcoming. This is a real estate show. I'm here to give you some numbers, some insight, and a little bit of uh, specific detail here about residential here in the South Bay. As always, I'm going to focus on three topics. Number one, quarterly numbers. I'm a little bit late. If you guys read my weekly blog, you saw this in the first week of July, or really the second week of July after I got back from a little vacation. Topic number two, we're going to get into the unfortunate landslide that happened in Rolling Hills Estates on Pear Tree Lane, where about a dozen homes were lost. I'm going to talk about landslides and PV, insurance, and how to protect yourself with due diligence and upgrades to your property. And then finally, I'm going to wrap up with a little bit of insight in the market of what we're seeing, and it's really a result of golden handcuffs for a lot of property owners and buyers who are just frustrated, and it's about renting property, whether you're renting a property you own that you used to live in or a frustrated buyer that you're renting. So those are three topics, quarterly numbers, landslides, and renting that we're seeing with both buyers and sellers here in the South Bay. So without further ado, we got a lot to cover. Let's get into it. I am going to fly through these quarterly numbers. You guys know you can go to Haynes, R-E, that's H-A-Y-N-E-S-R-E.com, click the link on the blog and you can scroll down to early July and check out these quarterly numbers. But if you're not a reader, you're in the car listening to us or on a walk, let me rattle off the numbers for you. So as always, we typically start with Manhattan Beach. Q2 numbers, we look at them year over year. So this quarter number two compared to last year's quarter number two. And when you look at it in Manhattan Beach, prices are down 9.9%, almost 10%. They dropped from 3.15 million to a little over 2.8 million on median prices. If you look at the rolling 12 month average, which kind of smooths out Manhattan Beach, the city's down just 3.2% down about a hundred grand on the medium price. So you guys, this is two quarters in a row that we've seen Manhattan Beach down year over year and on a rolling 12 month median price average. So very interesting, you can't find the numbers, prices are down, but I'll get a, a, into a little bit more detail on why I could have rosier colored glasses on that, maybe because I'm a realtor, or if we really have to look at the numbers and go, they're telling us something. To wrap up on Manhattan Beach sales, the transaction volume uh, or closed sales, excuse me, is down 24.3%. That's a big drop, but it's not as big as the past two quarters where we were seeing 35, 40, 50% drop in cities. Moving on from Manhattan Beach, we're going to go to the Palos Verdes Peninsula and one of the most desirable cities, or at least some of the hottest cities over the past few years was Palos Verdes Estates. It was surging and at one point matched Manhattan Beach on median prices. That is no longer. It is now trailing Manhattan Beach by almost 10% and quarter over quarter, or excuse me, not quarter over quarter, quarter year over year, PVE is down 16.4%. That's a big drop. 
when you look at rolling 12-month median prices, just like Manhattan Beach, it's not as bad, but it's still down 7.1%. And closed sales, down 13.7%. Not as bad as we've seen in the past and not as steep as Manhattan Beach, but PVE is down on sales as well. Moving on to RPV, the most affordable city on the Palos Verdes Peninsula, that is down just 0.2%. So essentially flat. And when you look at the rolling 12-month median average, they're actually up 1.5%. So the interesting thing about RPV is because it's so affordable, kind of like the North Redondo of the beach cities, is that where buyers are going because interest rates are so high and the affordability is better. Interesting question to pose and look into, but sales are down 30%. So there is a big drop there in RPV. Moving on to Rolling Hills Estates, prices are up in Rolling Hills Estates 13.7%, and on a rolling 12 month medium price average, it's down 20%. You guys hear me say time and time again in RHE, it's a very volatile market because one year we had loads of $5 million sales in the Rolling Hills Country Club. Now that that development sold out, then you get a bunch of condo sales that people were too afraid to sell during the pandemic that are at much lower prices. Those have kind of cleared out, so you're seeing a leveling off, but when you do a median average, it's down. So Rolling Hills Estates is really difficult to get a gauge on one day i'll take numbers where we take out rolling hills country club and condos and we can maybe see a smoother um, sign but right now rhe is a little bit vol volatile i can tell you from experience though it's a it's been a fairly smooth ride this year in rhe i don't know how to define <laughs> fairly smooth ride but it's not as crazy as up 13 percent uh quarter and then rolling 12 month down 20 percent that's just not the case and then behind the gates rolling hills we're just going to look at rolling 12 month medium prices because that market has so few sales and they're actually up 11.6 percent which is a a breath of fresh air for that city because it was getting hit pretty hard the last few quarters in fact probably the worst hit city over the last year or so after having the best run up during the pandemic moving on to hermosa beach the mighty little city is officially up 12.6%. That is a nice bump where last quarter it saw an 8.6% decline. When you look at the smoother numbers, the rolling 12-month median, it's down just 1.4%, so essentially flat, and sales were down 19%, much better than the 46.3% we saw uh, of a sales decline in Q1. So that's a great sign for the city. And then wrapping up here with the South Bay, Redondo Beach. Remember the numbers I pull also include Hollywood Riviera to some extent. Uh, if you've got a Redondo Beach PO, so about half of a Hollywood Riv. Redondo Beach Q2 medium prices down 5.3%, which is Pretty darn good compared to what you've seen in some of the other cities. When you look at the rolling 12-month medium prices, it's up 2.5%. So fairly flat in Redondo Beach. And closed sales were down 27%, but again, not as bad as last quarter like most cities. So you guys really, let me give you some major takeaways from the quarterly numbers, and these are key. It was really hard to extract an opinion in Q1 because we were seeing big drops finally in prices and huge crashing in sales, and we needed to see more confirmation or flattening out or bumps back up. And what we have seen is, is the most expensive cities, the Palos Verdes Estates, the Manhattan beaches of the world have seen back-to-back -back quarters of falling prices. And so what it's signaling to some people is the luxury markets aren't as strong. But on the flip side that you're seeing a lot of agents talking about are the low, low sales numbers because people who bought two and three years ago who have 3% or lower interest rates just aren't selling. And so you're seeing fewer high price sales because people want to hold on to their real estate. They don't care to sell it lower or even at a small increase in appreciation because their rates are so low. So there's a little bit of a push pull of going, hey, the numbers don't lie and prices are going down, 
but are they going down because there are so few sales and the sales that are occurring are on the lower end of the price spectrum. So that's something to take away from PVE and Manhattan Beach. And then you've got other areas like Redondo, which is darn smooth. You've got Hermosa Beach that's now gone up compared to going down last year. And then you've got Rancho Palos Verdes, one of the most affordable markets in the South Bay with great schools, big lots, and homes. And that is flat, if not trending up, even among fewer sales. So those are kind of the takeaways to give you my conclusion on everything, or if I can give you a a Richard Haynes opinion on all this, my conclusion, quite frankly, is I'm torn. I'm a big numbers data guy, and you see a lot of price depreciation, but it's compared to Q1 and Q2 of 2022, which was kind of the last gasp of the peak of our market, and then the second half of 2022, we started to see the market start to slow down. So we're up against really tough comps. Q3 and Q4, if we're down as that market was uh, 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 swooning last year, then maybe there's more to it with the price drops. But I think there's a chance we might be up compared to Q3 and Q4 of last year, or at least flat, which would be really good for the markets. But the numbers don't lie, and we are trending down. But my rose-colored glasses, maybe as a realtor, maybe I'm biased, is the market still feels darn strong. My buyers are still frustrated. uh, Properties that are priced in line with the comparable sales sell quickly and they sell efficiently and a a lot of them with multiple offers. And when you have historically low homes for sale throughout the South Bay, that bodes well for sellers. So I really am torn I'm worried, I'm biased that the market is strong as a realtor out there hustling for my clients. And then the other side of it is the numbers don't lie. Do you gotta just look at the numbers and say prices are going down? I don't care if there's an inventory squeeze or or you know fewer sales or transactions, uh, the numbers are down. So I'll let you guys come to that conclusion and go check out my blog for more numbers. And really, Q3 is going to be a big report as well as Q4. And then obviously, the year-to-date numbers at the end of the year are going to tell us a lot. So there you guys have it. We've got a lot more to get to. And I want to wrap it up here in about five, not five minutes, about five to ten minutes, five minutes each on the next two topics, which is topic number two, landslides. You guys, our hearts go out to the owners in Rolling Hills Estates on Pear Tree Lane, where... A handful, double digits, a dozen, we're not quite sure how many actually slipped into the canyon, but close to a dozen homes were red tagged. I actually showed these properties, as I mentioned in a past um, podcast, uh, and there were no signs of cracks in foundations or the street starting to slip away. Um, But man, if you've got bad drainage or broken pipes underneath or overwatering and those hillsides get saturated with water, that's where you have huge risks on landslides. But you guys, again, I'm going to defer to my blog. I just wrote a post last week where I go over the history of Palos Verdes landslides, and I pulled in my opinion, the five most famous landslides in Palos Verdes Estates. I'm not Palos Verdes Estates, excuse me, on the Palos Verdes Peninsula. There's one in Palos Verdes Estates of note, and the rest, all four, are kind of the RPV, Rolling Hills Estates, uh, uh, you know, southern and eastern part of the hill. Um, It's my list. I'm not a historian. I'm not a geologist. I'm not a landslide expert, but I go over that if you want to look into it. The biggest one in my mind was the Portuguese Bend slide that wiped out 140 homes back in the day, the Portuguese Bend clubhouse and its pier, and that is still active today. You've got the Flying Triangle landslide in Rolling Hills. You have the Bluff Cove landslide off PV Drive West that I remember growing up, them repairing and getting rid of some homes. The Ocean Trails, 18th whole golf course falling into the ocean and then donald trump bought it out of bankruptcy and it's now trump national today and then finally pear tree lane you guys there's some interesting history behind those but i really want to talk about homeowners insurance you're not covered read the blog 
you can try and get additional coverage, but it's just probably not going to happen for you. Um, I think there's some other interesting tidbits in that blog about ordinance and law insurance and loss of use insurance. Now, again, if your home slips into a landslide, those may not apply, and you've got to uh, speak to your insurance broker about that. But really, this is the time to get your policies dialed in, you guys, and at the very least with fire insurance because Palos Verdes is a high fire zone and there's always fire risk at the beach cities as well. So it's a good opportunity to look at ordinance and law, loss of use, really dial in your fire insurance policy and then are there any upgrades to your policy that you can make to try and prevent catastrophic loss, you guys. And then last but not least, due diligence and prevention, guys. Structural engineers, soil engineers are your best friends, not just in Palos Verdes, but by the beach as well. You guys have sand, there's shoring issues, there's movement, you need to know soils, liquefaction zones. Soils engineers and structural engineers make me feel the best when I'm in escrow for clients because they truly are the greatest home inspectors beyond your general inspection that can really say, hey, you got a problem with this house? Or they go, this is a good condition house. I have no concern, but here are some things you should think about upgrading on to protect your investment. And that's like a warm blanket to have, even though they cost thousands of dollars. If you're spending two, three, four plus million dollars, spending 2,500 on a structural engineer and you know a thousand two thousand dollars on a soils engineer's opinion up front on your property great investment in due diligence and prevention and then they give you upgrades like sump pumps and french drains and caisson work or footing work etc etc so you guys check that blog post that gets into the pv landslides insurance structural soils engineers and and then uh you know a couple other specialists that you can always hire when you're in escrow on your home or wanting to protect your investment so again haynesre.com that's h-a-y-n-e-s-r-e.com and go to my rolling hills estates landslide blog insurance and due diligence report and you guys i want to wrap things up with topic number three anecdotal evidence which i like sharing with you guys We have tons of buyers that I'm working with right now, same as our team. They feel like there are more buyers out there than sellers, and I've talked about most of the sellers being trust or probate sales, meaning someone's passed away and the beneficiaries or a family is selling that because they have no use for the property or they're dividing it up between people who are inheriting those proceeds or moves or someone sold a company and they've made a huge amount of money and they just go i want to sell this house because i'm upgrading to something huge 1031 exchanges but really not a lot of people going i can sell my house and afford a move up home like we saw one two three years ago with lowering interest rates and home prices accelerating higher what i am really seeing is quite a few clients who can afford their move up property and they go, Richard, we've owned our house or we've had multiple houses over the last five, seven, 10 years plus. We have huge gains and a 3% or lower interest rate. We can afford the move up home with other funds and we can hugely cash flow our property. And while I don't recommend renting out single family homes or townhomes and condos because they're inefficient and you can get more rent for price owning triplexes, fourplexes, or other properties, when you've got a fixed rate at 2.9% or 3.2% interest only, that's an asset these days with interest rates approaching 7%. And if you can cash flow, have that exposure to real estate, and with inflation still high, real estate really thrives as an inflation hedge, I'm seeing people rent out their properties. And we've rented a beautiful townhome in North Redondo Beach for big bucks for a client who bought Manhattan Beach. We rented out a Manhattan Beach condo that would get a great price if sold, but the client is so happy with their low rate and the rental rate. And we've just met with another client who's ready to do a move up home. And they go, should we keep this and rent it out? 
And that is a lot of the considerations uh, sellers are having these days. So it's creating this squeeze on inventory of houses that would normally come out. I'll even give you another conversation I had with my dentist, who I've known for a very long time. And he's actually about to retire. He brought on another dentist, a younger guy, to expand his practice and take over for him. And he told me, he's like, we just inherited my parents' property in Palos Verdes. And he goes, we're going to fix it up. And I thought he was going to say he might sell. And he goes, we're going to just rent it out and hold it because it cash flows and we can put debt on it. And it's amazing. And I was like, wow, people are really thinking hard about keeping properties and a lot of them are where in scenarios they would be sellers so that's on the sale side which is really contracting inventory because of these golden handcuffs so to speak with low interest rates and then on the flip side we have buyers becoming renters now we still have loads of people ready to buy and we're doing quite a few deals big down payments even cash buyers, we've even found a client who's putting down 10% and they're going to move forward with a transaction. But we've had two or three clients who have been looking for a while now and life events pop up and they just go, you know what? We need more space now. We can't wait anymore. It's too hard in this market. And they go and rent, rent a home and then rent out their condo or town home that they've had. Or we've had clients who go, you know what? I have a baby on the way. We thought we were gonna be able to pick up a property before the baby came. It's not gonna happen, so we're gonna rent. We're gonna be able to nest, have that baby, and when we feel like we're back on our feet, we're gonna go search again, and we don't have you know, a shot clock that we're up against and make a bad decision on a home purchase or overpay. And so they're renting. And we've seen this time and time again of people going, man, we didn't realize that rates were actually at 7%. And when we find those programs where we put 10% down, there's now mortgage insurance and the rate's even higher. And if our FICO score needs to be 740 for that, but we're at 715, well, let's work on getting that FICO score up to get the best rate. So we're not at 7.5% compared to 6.8% and people are choosing to rent. So you guys, there is so much rental action going on, one with sellers and buyers throwing up their hands and going, I'm going to rent too. But there's still plenty of buyers chasing too few homes for sales and for sale. And then you've got buyers who are renting and that are going to come back into the market at a later date. It's a really interesting and intriguing market. And so to put a bow on this, you've got numbers in the South Bay, a lot of them saying prices are going down. However, sales are plummeting, and part of that has to do with low inventory. And then you've got sellers who are renting in droves that are, would be would-be sellers. You have buyers who are renting that are taking competition away, but buyers are still having trouble buying homes amidst low inventory and a lot of competition. So you guys, I'm throwing a lot at you of what's going on, but man, the last three or four years starting in 2019 where we had kind of our first big South Bay swoon and rates were pushing four to five percent, and then the pandemic threw everything into a chaos in February of 2020, and then we had this down spike in early 2020 and then surging through 2020 2021 and then starting to tail off in 2022 and then we've had this surge back in low inventory in 2023 so it's truly been one of the most incredible residential markets to be in over the last four years you guys it's been hard for buyers and sellers to manage this market it still remains extremely complicated i urge you guys to call me or a trusted agents that, that have a ton of experience in the south bay because everyone's specific scenario is unique and we give targeted advice to you on your unique situation and it is so complicated we give different advice on different ends of the spectrum for all clients because there's so much nuance in this marketplace so you guys i hope this podcast was helpful for you you got q2 numbers you got some insight on the landslide 
history, insurance, due diligence, and prevention, and you can read more about it on my blog, both the quarterly numbers and the landslide plus insurance, and then you're getting some anecdotal evidence on this renter market, which is amazing, lack of supply, and just a tough market for buyers and a market where sellers go, hey, I'll sell if I have to, if I want to, but I can also rent, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and so, you guys, I can go on and on. I'm not going to do the blah, blah, blah. I hope this was helpful. You guys are amazing for sticking with me in this podcast. Next month, we have another great guest. It's on the topic of charity and fitness. Work on your fitness plus do a little good. And then we're also working on bringing bringing in insurance experts and engineering experts to talk about more of landslide and risks here throughout the South Bay. And then, of course, I'm going to come back at you in August with another podcast, hopefully with the big affordability numbers put out by CAR every quarter, which are so key in forecasting what we think is going to happen in the market. Thanks again, you guys. Happy summer. Stay cool out there. And we'll see you next time at the Richard Haynes real estate show. Take care, everyone.